Hello and welcome. Sifu Anthony here. I believe we're live here. So please give me a moment because this is brand new software. And let's see. I'm trying to see if there's anybody in here. So somebody, if you're in the chat room, can you go ahead and chat and let me see what's happening there? Because I can't tell so far who's here. So can you hear me? Can you see me? Let's get some of that stuff. Hi, Cynthia. Okay, good. So it's working. The audio is good. It sounds good. Hi, Brenda. Hi, Sherry. Great. Okay, so it looks like it's working. Um, hi, Dale. Hi, Angie. Cool. Okay, so I can see the comments and I can see the video. Hi, Stephen. Okay, so here's, here's how it's gonna work. Sorry, please forgive me. I'm just getting used to this, this uh, new software, which I think is super cool if this works the way I think it will work. So welcome, I'm Sifu Anthony. I'm the director of Flowing Zen and we're just gonna do a fun and easy Tai Chi class today. Uh, even if you don't know any Tai Chi or you've tried Tai Chi in the past and you're really not sure about it, I'm going to make things simpler and easier for you. I'm going to give you plenty of opportunities to ask questions in the chat windows. Uh, here's how it'll work. Uh, I can sit here. Let's actually test this out. I can sit here and use this camera, but I believe that I can also switch the cameras and go back there and do some movements. So it looks like both cameras are working, which is cool. Hi, Stuart. And what I'll do is, obviously if I'm at the other camera, I, I won't be able to see the comments. So you'll just have to pause your comments then, but you can save them for later. And that's the cool thing here is that we can go back and forth. Uh, I really love the, the live dynamic because it's not just me you know, teaching something and then you learning it. It's not one way, it's two directional. So please, uh, I totally encourage you to ask questions. Just maybe wait for me to be sitting here so that I can actually read the comments. So let's dive in. I wanna actually just get up and get started and start moving and then we'll take some breaks to, uh, to talk about what we're doing and why we're doing it and all things like that. And I, yeah, that's right. You guys can not only chat with me but you can chat with each other. So feel free to keep chatting when I move. Just don't expect me to be able to see it, right? I may not be able to see it. Um, Good, thank you, Cynthia. So let's see, uh, what am I gonna do here? I wanna go full screen and go to the other camera. Okay, let's try this. So can everybody still hear me? I've got my mic over there and I just wanna make sure that you can hear me. It looks like you can see me, I can see that on the camera and you can see my little yoga mat here. So I just wanna double check that the audio is working. Is that a yes? Audio still working? You can still hear me from back here? Hmm. I'm not getting any responses from people. Okay, thanks, Dale. I assume that thumbs up means that the audio is working. Okay, somebody will let me know if the audio stops working. Okay, so let me give you a preview of what we're gonna do. Okay, good. Just testing things out. So first of all, what, what, what is Tai Chi? What is Tai Chi flow? What are we shooting for in this class? Well, first let me show you and then I'll, I'll teach you. But basically, I just want you to learn a very simple, uh, traditional Tai Chi uh, pattern, but we're gonna do it in a very loose and free and forgiving way. So it looks like this. And this is called cloud hands or waving the hands like clouds and in the traditional forms it's very often done something like this where you actually step several times obviously i don't have enough room to keep going like it does in the form but oh look i can go the other way i can step the other way right so 
In fact, I'm going to do my best in this class to keep all of my movements on this little yoga mat because that's a big mistake that a lot of people make. They think that in order to practice Tai Chi, they have to go out and do the whole form someplace where the whole form can fit. And I, I lived in New York City for many years and I had a tiny, tiny little apartment and I practiced my routines in that apartment. I just had to adjust them. And the fact is you can do a lot of Tai Chi even on a small yoga mat. So that's what I'm gonna to do today, just to even just to prove to you that Tai Chi is very flexible. It's funny how a lot of people in the Tai Chi world, they're very rigid, and that's the opposite of Tai Chi. I, tai Chi is supposed to be soft and fluid and flowing, and I'm gonna hopefully give you a taste of that today with the way that I teach you Tai Chi, and I'm gonna, if you've done some Tai Chi in the past, I hope to liberate you from the rigid approach to Tai Chi. Now, if you have a teacher that you like, please don't go and offend them. I don't mean to step on anybody's toes. Don't go talking to your Tai Chi teacher and say, well, Sifu Anthony said this. That, that's not what I'm after here. What I'm after here is empowering you to understand Tai Chi on a different way, in a different way, whether you're a fresh beginner or whether you are, you've been doing Tai Chi for many years. Okay? So all we're gonna to learn today is what we're gonna do some auxiliary techniques, some actually some Qigong techniques, I'll talk about that in a moment, to loosen up. But what we really wanna do is learn cloud hands. This is cloud hands. We wanna learn it based on the principles of Tai Chi. And we wanna learn some variations. So a variation, for example, would be like I did, which is just, I could just walk around a little bit, moving around. This is a variation. I'm just kind of walking with my cloud hands. I'm still giving you a preview, by the way. I'm not, I haven't started teaching yet. Okay, so that's, that's one variation. Another variation of cloud hands would be just to use one, one arm. I can put the other arm on my hip and I can just focus on one arm, but still following some of the principles. So with cloud hands, there are many variations and I'm gonna show you as many as we can. Oh, by the way, I'm gonna shoot for about uh, we're going to shoot for about 45 minutes for this whole class. So hopefully we'll end, you know, about 4.45 p.m. Eastern. That's my goal. We'll see. I don't always hit my goals with the timing. So that's the agenda today. We want to learn some simple Tai Chi. But to do that and to learn the flow and to learn the principles of Tai Chi and to relax while you're doing that, we're going to need some other techniques and we'll talk about some things along the way as well. Okay, so first of all, what is Tai Chi? What is, what is this move and how does it differentiate from Qi Kong? Uh, well, Tai Chi is short for Tai Chi Chuan, which is a form of Kung Fu. So usually we think of Kung Fu as something more like <laughs> which, okay, it is, this is Shaolin Kung Fu. We think of it more as, you know, like Bruce Lee type of stuff, which it is, it absolutely is. But Tai Chi is just a soft form of Kung Fu. Hang on a second. Um, technical difficulties here. Hold on. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Okay, so Tai Chi is a soft form of Kung Fu. So uh, one way I have of describing this is that it's a bit like the difference between cursive writing and block writing. So everybody's familiar with cursive writing, right? Where it all is smooth and each letter flows into the, other, the next one. And block writing is where it doesn't have to be all caps, but you know, the, each letter is distinct. So a lot of martial arts, including you know, karate and many forms of kung fu, they're very blockish, right? One move, next move, next move, next move. Okay, each one is separate. I'm just doing them slow so you can understand. Tai Chi is still a martial art, but the moves, this was actually somewhat revolutionary a long time ago. With Tai Chi, the moves flow into each other. So you see now it's kind of hard to tell where one move starts and the next one begins, right? Same thing with, with cloud hands. Although this is still one exercise, where does it begin and end? Where's the beginning of cloud hands? So that's, that, that's Tai Chi. Tai Chi is a soft internal martial art. It's built on the flow of Qi or internal energy. Uh, by the way, the, the Qi in Tai Chi does not mean energy, it means ultimate. We're Qi from Qigong is energy, 
but the chi from Tai Chi is actually pronounced ji. We all pronounce it wrong, it's okay, it's just been Americanized, but I just want you to know that the chi from Tai Chi does not mean energy. Tai Chi Chuan really means, um, literally means great ultimate kung fu. Another way of describing it would be yin yang kung fu, or uh, cosmos kung fu. These are all, this is a philosophy, Tai Chi is the philosophy of yin yang, which is a philosophy of the cosmos. Okay, so that's what Tai Chi is. Well, what about Qigong? What's Qigong? Qigong is the art of energy cultivation, and it's specifically designed towards goals. So Qigong, for example, medical Qigong is designed for health. So a famous medical Qigong exercise, which you won't be able to see because of the camera, is called lifting the sky. Let's see, uh, what's another famous, I'll start from the side, pushing mountains. It's one of the Ikin Moana hands. This is a form of medical Qigong. Its purpose is for healing. Other types of Qigong are for martial arts or spirituality or other goals. Uh, but the moves themselves are not martial. And we're going to learn that right now experientially. So I want you to learn a technique, a Qigong technique, called shaking the tree. I want you to do it with me. So if, you're, if you haven't already uh, gotten up, I want you to, you don't need much room, just a little bit of room. And we're going to do this Qigong exercise called shaking the tree. Step out somewhere about hip or shoulder width, it doesn't exactly matter. Just step out a little bit and then just start bouncing a little bit. And it should be very loose and flowing. And the idea here is to relax. I'm going to show it from the side a little bit. So the idea of this is to sort of shake away any tension that you may have. So it shouldn't be stiff, don't do that. And it doesn't need to be exactly formalized either. Sometimes people teach it like this where it's just it has to be a certain way. It should be loose. You can move around. I can release my shoulders a little bit as I bounce. Release a kink in my neck. So the idea is simply to shake away some tension. And if you have a kink, we all have kinks in our body sometimes. It might be in your hip, it might be in your back, in your neck. See if you can move a little bit and shake it out. So the idea is to soften up, right? To loosen up any of those kinks. Uh, you should just breathe spontaneously for now, but if you can, you want to breathe in gently through the nose and then out gently through the mouth. So just bouncing around, shaking the tree. Okay? Try that for a moment. So if you've got the hang of it, try it for a moment. And if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the chat box and I'll take a peek at the questions in a moment. Okay, good. see any questions so we'll continue. So think of this as a warm-up. We're just warming up. And you should look ridiculous. <laughs> when I teach a, a whole class of this, you know, you get 30 or 40 people bouncing, looking ridiculous, especially if they close their eyes, which you can do. You can close your eyes if you want and just feel your way into it. Everybody looks ridiculous and that's okay. Good. The shaking, bouncing, Breathing, don't forget to breathe. Don't hold your breath. You should breathe through this. So my breathing, I'll come a little closer. I'm breathing. As I'm bouncing, I'm moving around and I'm breathing. Very simple. So give me some feedback. How does that exercise feel? Do you feel a little bit more relaxed? Does it feel like it's loosening you up and getting the blood flowing? And in the Qigong tradition, we say that if we get the blood flowing, we're, we're also getting the qi or the energy flowing. What does that mean? What does it mean to get the qi flowing? Well, it means all of your fluids are flowing, for example. Uh, it means your cerebrospinal fluid is flowing. It means your synovial fluid is flowing. Your blood, of course. Your lymph fluid is flowing. It means all of the fluids and processes in your body are flowing, but the past master is just simplified and called it qi. So how does this feel? How does the shaking the tree exercise feel? Does it feel relaxing? because that's our goal. We want it to feel relaxing. If it does not feel relaxing, you need to loosen it up a little bit. You basically need to not, not be so stiff. Don't be, like a, don't be like a tree. Be softer, looser. Almost like you're, you know, you've had a, a drink or two and you're just very relaxed. Okay, so now, that's, that's a Qigong exercise. We're using it right now as a very simple and easy 
warm-up exercise just to get things loosened up a little bit. But let me ask you a question. Is that a martial arts technique? Would you ever block a punch or throw a punch with this? Is this some way of defending against an attack? I guess maybe it's a way of looking ridiculous and scaring somebody away, but no, obviously this is like a warm-up exercise. It's like a, a form of calisthenics, right? Whereas this, the technique we're going to learn called plow hands, does have a martial arts application. You may not be able to see it, it may be confusing to you, what are we doing here? But we go in a martial arts setting, for example, or a self-defense scenario, what we would do is go from something like this to something like this. Just that. A smaller move, much faster, obviously, we're not going to go slow in a real fight. So where is that move? Well, right here. See? Right here. It's smooth on both sides, but if I want to block a punch that's coming from over there, let's say, I just pop it out. My stance might change. It might be like this. So this is cloud hands. Of course, it has an application. If someone were to grab my wrist, I don't have anybody handy at the moment, but I could use cloud hands to release it just by using the same movement. So that those are martial arts applications. You don't need to remember these or worry about them, but what I'm trying to do is help you to understand the dividing line between Qigong and Tai Chi. I've written about this. I've got a few videos on the subject, but I think it's important to understand that once we're into the realm of Tai Chi, even if we're not doing it yet as a martial art, we should understand that it is or it could be or maybe one day we can turn it into a martial art. Whereas this, shaking the tree, a Qigong exercise, will never be a martial art. It's useful for martial arts, but this is not a martial arts move. Okay, does that make sense? I hope that's clear. Let me check the comments here. Okay. So Angie says she starts the day with uh, shaking the tree. Good. Cynthia says it feels great. So it's helpful for me as a teacher if you give me feedback. So if the shaking the tree exercise feels good, you can just run to your phone or your computer and let me know. So now we've got the chi sort of flowing a little bit with our shaking the tree exercise, right? So we're a little bit looser. Now, I want you to stand about, we're going to learn the cloud hands technique. I want you to stand about hip width or shoulder width, and the feet, you can adjust the feet. So the toes are basically forward, you can see, but they can, you know, they can point out a little bit, whatever, whatever is comfortable. Bend your knees a little bit, get comfortable. I'll show it from the side, okay? And now, I want you to grab a ball, like a basketball, okay? About that big, maybe a soccer ball or a football in Europe. And you've got two options with this ball. You've got this way or this way. Right? So you can just flip it. So without moving your body, just take a stance like this. Very natural. Don't worry. It doesn't have to be perfect. Take a stance like this and flip. Practice that for a moment. You feel it. Those of you who are more advanced, so a few of you I know you've been practicing for a while. So as you're sort of doing this, you've got the hang of this, I assume. It's not so hard for you but you can feel the chi, you can feel the ball of chi between the hands. So that's more advanced. Don't expect, if you're brand new to Tai Chi or you're, you're, uh, you're, you're new to this, these arts, don't expect to feel a ball of chi right away. But some of you will feel sort of the magnetism between the hands, just even by doing this, okay? So George, we're not really doing the five phase routine, but we, you can do it. Normally we would use the shaking the tree as one of phase two. But right now we're just skipping the five phase routine. That's too much for a class like this. Okay, so by the way, I think you can share this even from those of you who are in the class. I think you can sh hit the share button if you want people to come in. I think it's not too late to share or maybe they'll see it later and they can catch the replay. So I know we're always, right? I know you guys are the same as me, which is you're always trying to turn people on to Qigong and Tai Chi, and it's just hard, you know, the world is still, the world is slowly getting there, but we're not quite there yet, and it's, you know, you have to give people a nudge, that's why I, you know, I do a lot of these things in different formats to, to spread the word and so people can get a chance to try it. Okay, back to our cloud hands, so, for, so far we're just playing with this ball, right? Now, 
We're going to break it down systematically. I want you to hold the ball like this, and I want you to put your right hand on top. This is your right hand, which should be mirrored. Uh, I, there's a chance that the camera flips this. Um, I, I believe this should be... I, I'm trying to be mirrored for you. Or you know what I'll do to guarantee it? I'll do it this way. Your right hand is on top, and so is mine. This is my right hand and your right hand. And what I want you to do is shift the weight, turn a little bit. This should be a little bit hard to hold. It shouldn't be too uncomfortable, but it's not easy. And then I want you to flip the ball. Now I want you to relax, turn, shift, and then flip. Relax, turning, shifting, flip. Pause for a moment here so we have a distinction between the moves. Now my left hand is on top, shifting and turning, and then I get to the edge and I flip. Okay? I'll do it from the front. And you can mirror me now. So now your left hand is on top. I believe the camera will work that way. So <clears throat> your left hand is on top. We're going to shift and turn to your left. Flip. Shift and turn to the right. Flip. Shift. Turn. Flip. Shift. Turn. And flip. Now I want you to get comfortable with the feet. Don't feel like the feet are glued to the ground. If you need to adjust the feet any way you like, make them wider or, or narrower, go for it. Right. Turning, flipping, shifting and turning. Don't worry about the breathing right now, but also don't hold the breathing. Definitely breathe. Breathing is good. Right? Okay. Flip, turn, flip. Now, I mentioned that we're both shifting and turning. What's the difference? Well, I'll, I'll show you. This is shifting my weight, left and right, right? All I'm doing is shifting. This is turning. And we want both with this exercise. We want to both shift the weight and turn the body. Then we flip, shift a little bit, and turn. Flip, shift, and turn. Flip, shift, and turn. Now, sometimes people get really carried away and they sort of tweak the knee or they do something, this is a really important principle. You should be comfortable in both Qigong and Tai Chi. We need to adjust the exercises so that they're comfortable. So if you need to take a narrower stance or don't bend the knees as much, do it. Make it comfortable. That's super important whether you're doing a simple exercise like this or even a, let's see, a more sophisticated technique. You have to find a comfort level. You can't expect to do it perfectly from the beginning, or you, a move like that, like the, the snake, this one's snake creeping down. To do it correctly might take you years, honestly. You can't just, um, you can't expect to do it in a one hour class, or in a week, or a month, or maybe not even a year. It may take you a long time to build the strength and flexibility. The same thing goes with this exercise. So if you feel pain, don't do it. Adjust. Find a way to do the exercise with as little pain as possible. Now, of course, you may have some back pain that you already had before Tai Chi or some knee, a pre-existing knee condition. But as best as we can, we're going to do this technique without causing any additional pain. Okay? That's very important in all of the Qigong and Tai Chi techniques that I teach. So now, let's break it down a little bit again. So we've got this ball, and we're basically shifting and turning, and all we're doing is flipping the ball either on this side or this side. And then the end result, when we smooth everything out, is what? It's a figure eight, right? The hands kind of trace a figure eight. It's not exact, but it'll give you the right idea that it's, a, it's like an infinity symbol, or the number eight on its side, which is like a fi figure eight. So if you see now, This is the flow of Tai Chi. This is what we want. We want this continuous flow. Now, I use the ball as an example, which is actually um, not exactly how Tai Chi is. You can loosen it up, basically. Relax the shoulders and the elbows, and then the hands don't have to necessarily hold the ball. They can just sort of... You can see now my hands are not exactly holding the ball. They're just relaxed. And what I'm doing is I'm moving from the body. 
my arms are really just kind of doing this. They're just going up and down, but when I move the body, you see they trace a circle. So when I'm moving the body, I've got this figure eight, right? I turn a little bit so you can see. And if I stop moving the body, the arms are really just doing this. Lift the body. So sometimes we joke that it's a bit like a T-Rex, you know, Tyrannosaurus Rex, they have those like little arms and they move around. <laughs> so it's not exactly like this. Don't, you don't need to pin your elbows on your body, but that's the idea, right? So if, if this was T-Rex Tai Chi, I can still create the circles by moving my body. Whereas if I do without, I can't really, I can't really do it. So if that helps you, then take the, creates a little space underneath the armpits, but the idea is still there. Some of you are more advanced. If you want to try a more advanced version of this, it's really easy. It's easy to make it harder. Just step out wider. Right? Now this is a horse stance, and can you still, here's the tendency. So try this if you like, if you want more of a challenge. Most people, once they take a horse stance like this, what they end up doing is they end up just shifting. So they, don't, they stop turning, right? You can see now I'm shifting, I'm not turning. Where we want both, right? We want to shift and turn, right? Same thing here. But that's more challenging, you don't need to do that. You can just do it in a natural stance. Breathing and flowing. Now let's take a break. Shaking a tree break. So maybe you've got a kink in your lower back from these unusual techniques, maybe a kink in your shoulder. Just try to shake it out a little bit. Don't forget to breathe. You can even go down a little bit. Basically, we're freeing up kinks in the body, so whatever feels good. If it feels good, you're gonna loosen it up and open it up. Now one added, um, I don't always teach it this way, but it's nice for some of you if you want a, a little extra for the shaking the tree. Every once in a while, you come up on the heels a little bit and come gently down. It's like a little gentle thud. Uh, those of you who've learned the eight brocades for me, it's like the, the last one, shaking the back where we come down on the heels. Except here, we're doing it in the middle of the shaking. Every once in a while, we, we just come down so watch, I'll do it, I'll do it without talking. Typically I'll do the thud with an exhalation. And this should feel good. For some reason, the gentle thud of the heel feels nice, it's, it does something to sort of uh, wake up the spine a little bit. So I hope that makes sense. You can do this shaking the tree whenever you like. You can also just take a break and stop. If you just want to relax and stop for a second, you can do that as well. I'm gonna get a sip of water and check. Okay, thank you Marge, that was helpful because I'm using this weird software and I'm not sure. It, it's flipped for me on the camera, but I guess that makes sense because yeah, I have to see the, the mirror image. Okay. So now let's come back. Let's come back to the um, cloud hands exercise. What I'm trying to get across to you is the flow of Tai Chi. This breaks my heart. Now, look, there, again, I don't want to step on anybody's toes, but the fact is that the way a lot of Tai Chi is taught is very stiff. Not everybody, there, there are good teachers out there, but there are also bad teachers. Or people maybe who just didn't get enough training. Well, they don't understand the principles of Tai Chi. So I see a lot of Tai Chi out there and Tai, you know, it's this art that's built on softness and flow. And what I see in their Tai Chi forms is very stiff and robotic. It just looks, I'm, I'm doing my best to do bad Tai Chi, it's not easy. Actually, it's even slower than that. Um, so let's see, very often it's, so slow that when I watch these videos on YouTube, 
or wherever. If I crank it up to two times speed, th their form, it's still a little bit slower than the way I teach beginners to do the form. So what's that about? Well, here, this will help you. Tai Chi should be not so slow that it doesn't flow. Okay? Not so slow that you lose the flow. You understand? So with cloud hands, for example, you can feel it right now. Hit the hang of the technique again, get it going. Sometimes it takes a little bit, a few tries, and then whoops, okay? Then you, you get the hang of it and it's, it's flowing. We're turning and shifting the weight a little bit. Okay? Now do it half speed. And what most of you will feel is that this is harder. That to do it slowly and stay relaxed is hard. And vice versa, if you try to go too fast, you also have to tense up. So it's really Goldilocks, right? We're trying to find, or the middle path, we're trying to find, uh, well, the, the, the Buddha summed it up nicely. We want, it's like the sitar string, which is like a guitar, an Indian guitar. We want the string not so tight that it breaks, and not so loose that it won't play a song. We want some place in the middle where it's ding, 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 you pluck the string, and you can hear the music. So the same thing here is we want it to be at a nice pace where it flows. It's nice and relaxed, right? It's not uh, robotic. Because if we go too slowly, we lose that flow and we're no longer relaxed. So what I'm trying to help you with today is to, to loosen up and find a nice pace where you can just flow and relax. Now what about this moving? I keep stepping and moving. How do you do that? Well, this is a good example of you just have to try it and keep practicing until you get it. I like it actually because uh, I, I consider myself, I pride myself on good teaching. I really try to break things down and make things as clear as I can. Uh, but there's no way to teach this. It, it, I'll do my best. I'll give you the words that I've got and I'll demonstrate it. But to teach the movement is really a matter of practice. Sometimes it's, it's the instruction is clear enough and then you have to go practice. So we'll move to one side here. We've got cloud hands. And what we're going to do is basically step the feet together. You see now that my feet are basically right next to each other, right? And then step out at the right time. So the key is when to step. And I can't tell you when to step, but I will tell you this. When you walk, the stepping foot is the one that does not have weight on it, right? So if I walk, this foot has all of the weight, this one is moving, this one is stepping, right? So that's the one that moves, obviously, right? Now this one is empty, so this is the one that's going to move, right? So if I'm walking, which one is empty and which one is full? It's the same thing with cloud hands. So here, right, this one's empty. And you see that turning of the waist will help you with the arms. It will help you to figure out um, which arm goes where. You just basically will feel, it's like if you, if you do it, if you step wrong, it's like, eh, you feel that it's, there's no flow. So just keep practicing. Even in five minutes, with five minutes of practice, you can get this flow. So that you should be able to step back and forth like I'm doing without breaking the flow. You don't need a lot of room. Here I am on a yoga mat, but I'm just stepping. I'm gonna turn around so you can see. Look, I can even do this in the flow. I'm not breaking the flow. Step in. I can turn around. I can basically I'm walking. Okay. And the idea is to not break the flow. So some of this, the trick to some of this is learning how to relax the hip. In the Tai Chi classics, they talk about loosening the waist. What they really mean is the, it's not the waist so much as the whole hip area. And what we're trying to learn to do is, you know, the hip is like a ball and socket, right? Let's see. Where can you see this fast over here? It's like a ball and socket. And what you really want to do here is allow the hips to fold. So I've got my hands 
could see. Got my hands in the folds of my groin, right? So when I turn, it sort of folds over this, this hand. That happens in Tai Chi as well, that we just move, and there's a little bit of a fold, and that allows us to free up this other foot. So when you fold there, what you're really doing is sinking into that leg, the supporting leg, and then the other one is free to move. And this naturally means that the hands are here, or here. It doesn't feel, if I'm over here, it doesn't feel right. This is how you'll develop the, the natural flow of cloud hands. And with not that much practice, even, I, I've, trust me, I've, I've taught a lot of students and I've seen ones who, you know, sometimes students come to you and they say, you know, I'm really, I, I, I'm not very coordinated at all. I'm a bit of a klutz. And I think to myself, oh, well, I hear that all the time. I bet I can help them. And then I see it, and honestly, they were right. <laughs> you know, they're pretty klutzy, they left and right, maybe you know, they don't have that motor coordination. But even those students, even you know, the ones that are really, really klutzy, really uncoordinated, they can still get the hang of cloud hands pretty quickly if they basically just relax and start to flow, and they don't try to go too slowly. That's, that's a big mistake. If you try to go too slow, it's going to be stiff and you won't get the hang of it. Let me just check out the questions here. Okay, so those, those are just thumbs up mostly. And okay, so if you do have a question, I get a little no notification. So if you have a question, go ahead and post it in there. In fact, let's just take a two second break. I'm gonna sit here and switch cameras. Does anybody have a question about cloud hands? Anything about this ex oh, two, two exercises we've learned basically so far, cloud hands and shaking the tree. Any questions? Also, feedback is helpful for me. So this is the, um, the only danger of, this is great that we're live, but I can't see you. So unlike a live class where I can really see everybody and I can gauge how they're doing, I need you to give me feedback to let me know like, oh, I'm having trouble with this or how do I do that? Or it feels this way. Those things will be very helpful for me to help you, just as a teacher. If you're a teacher, you know that you you know that 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 uh, bi-directional communication is super important with teaching. So does anybody have a question for me? Whoops. Whoa. I just made my logo very big. Whoops. Sorry about that. <laughs> Still learning. Okay. No questions. Oh, there's Dale. Okay, Dale, is there such thing as reverse cloud hands where you switch the direction of the flow? Okay, good question and good observation. Yes, there absolutely is. Let's, uh, let's go back to the other camera. So in most of the Yang style, really most of the Yang and the Chun style forms, uh, you'll see cloud hands in this direction. I'll turn around like this. So in the Yang style forms, it'll look something like this. And then in the Chun style forms, it's more like this, with bigger movements, okay? So that's one direction, right? That's this way and this way. One way to think of it is that regular cloud hands is leading kind of with the pinky side of the arm, right? Pinky side, pinky side, pinky side, pinky side. But what about the opposite direction? We can go this way. And this is the thumb side of the hand. Now you don't see that as cloud hands in the forms, but you see it in other classical patterns. So for, what's, can anybody think of a pattern from the Yang style, if you know me, Tai Chi? What's a pattern that involves this reverse cloud hands? I like the name, in Shaolin Kung Fu, this is, this is called the kitten washing his face. <laughs> so it's kind of like, I guess that's the idea, is that it's like, the kitten sort of washing his face like this, which is good, it helps you remember it. But in Tai Chi, what, what, what are the patterns that use this way? Well, this one, brush me twist it. Also called green dragon shoots pearl. You see that it's just the reverse cloud hands, right? I'm still doing, here's reverse cloud hands. And then if I just change my stance a little bit, brush me twist it. So green dragon shoots pearl which, again, is a martial arts technique. Deflecting, returning, striking. Okay? 
when it's done very slowly and it flows, so for example, if it's here, and then you go into the exercise, it's hard to tell what it is, but it's absolutely a martial arts technique and it can be used for self-defense. It just requires a whole different type of training, basically. Did I answer your question, Dale? So Carmel, thank you. So you, you enjoyed the warm-up of shaking the tree, uh, no stress. Good, that's the idea is that it's shaking away some stress. You know, if you, if you want to go deeper into the meditative aspect of Qigong and Tai Chi, it's sort of out of the realm of, you know, this is Facebook. And I know that we can only get so deep into this here. What I want to do is give you a little taste of Tai Chi. And then some of the freebies on my website and then certainly some of my paid courses I'll take you into the whole meditative side of it where we, where we enter Zen and we close our eyes and we meditate, small from the heart, all those things. Uh, but really what I'm trying to do here is give you something, and you can practice it. If you're brand new and you want to try something and you want to just see how it feels, even just five minutes a day, which is not so easy, but five minutes a day, you do a little shaking, shaking a tree for one or two minutes, and then have some fun with cloud hands, you'll feel it. It'll feel good. If you're sitting at your desk all day and you want to take a break, get up, you're shaking a tree, do some cloud hands and see how you feel after. Or you're concentrating on some work. Something's very important. This happened to me yesterday actually. I was writing a blog post and I was concentrating and I could tell where I, I lose focus a little bit. And so I just got up and did some Qigong and some Tai Chi and then I sat back down and I was able to concentrate. So these are very useful tools for the, those things. Stephen, moving slowly, so Stephen's question said, the question is, here I thought moving slowly and smoothly is a good thing. It is. It's also an advanced thing. It's harder to move slowly and smoothly. And you can see it. You can see it even in Tai Chi instructors. Basically, you have to, when you're watching Tai Chi on the web, you have to look at them with an eye of very simply asking this question, does it look soft? Does it look flowing? If it's very stiff, Again, I'm trying to do my bad Tai Chi on a yoga mat. If it's like this, very, it's slow, maybe even slower, but it's stiff. That's no good. That's wrong. Even though it's slow, even if it's smooth, if it's stiff, everything is wrong. Vice versa, it's much better to go, to go smoothly, even if it's a little bit faster. This is a misconception about Tai Chi. Um, really, it was only since the 20th century that Tai Chi was done only slowly. Um, so really since, since Yang Chung Fu, who was one of the, the founders of Tai Chi in the, the, the end of the, um, the beginning of the 20th century. Sorry, my screensaver just kicked on. Okay. Um, Yang Chung Fu taught it more for health and he was just doing it you know, at one pace. But all of the stories, especially of Chun style Tai Chi, they talk about fast and slow, and they talk about the hut and the her sounds of you know, hut, you know, doing a technique and using a sound just like any other martial art. So, and in fact, the stories of um, Yang Lu Chan say that he was you know observing his master, and I'm going to change the cameras here, and he could hear them across the wall doing their hut and hut sounds or whatever the sounds are who knows what the sounds were exactly um, so slow and smooth is good but not if it's stiff okay does that make sense and give me some feedback here is, is this what I see this a lot in the world of Tai Chi I see a lot of especially student level uh, let's see beginner level and intermediate level people trying to go too slow and they don't have the strength or the flexibility or the, the level of relaxation to go slow, and so they lose flow. So, go twice as fast. It's not that fast. This is by no means fast. Right? It's still slow. Right? This is not fast enough to block a punch, for example. But it's twice as fast as this. And it has much more flow. I can just, look, I can move around. I can step. Loose. Everything is soft. My shoulders are relaxed. My arms are relaxed. My waist is loose. And these are some of the principles of Tai Chi. 
right? Move with continuity is a principle of Tai Chi, but you also have to be soft and, and relaxed and flowing and loosen the waist and all these other things. So those things are really more important. Okay, good. I'm glad you understand, Stephen. Does anybody else have a question? Good. Okay, Carmo says, with cloud hands, after a while, I felt the need to enlarge the circle. It just felt natural. I let it flow, then small again. Perfect. And that's really the way that I teach Tai Chi. I prefer it this way, to, to um, go with the flow, <laughs> to do it in a loose and more spontaneous ma manner, almost more like jazz, jazz music. And what you did is exactly right, and it actually describes some of the difference between what they call uh, small frame and large frame Tai Chi. So large frame Tai Chi is basically the movements just get larger. Cloud hands, right? Larger. Larger because it feels good and something's flowing and we may feel the chi moving. And then small frame Tai Chi is usually more for more advanced and more for um, for martial arts, for application, for self-defense. So like I demonstrated earlier, if I'm gonna if there's a punch coming in here, like let's say somebody's trying to punch me like that and I want to block it like this, with this arm, uh, then I don't want to make it a big, slow movement. I, I don't want to go and take forever. I just, just move it out there. But you see that the, the, if you watch my body, the principles are still there. They're just much smaller. It's because I've spent a lot of time doing these larger movements that this movement can be done fast without tensing up. So you see I'm actually not blocking with my arm so much as a subtle movement of my body. Let's see if I can. So let's say the punch is coming in here. Just a little bit of a, and I'm connected. It's connected to my body. It's not just, for example, uh, let's see. It's not this, right? That's just arm. This is just a little movement of the body connect, sorry, the arm connected to the body, and that would be smaller frame. So bigger, large, small circle, reverse circle, all of this is variations of cloud hands, and that's what we want. We want that, that beautiful flow. Um, so this is another example of some of the confusion with Tai Chi. Let me go back to the other camera. Sorry, I keep switching cameras because it's a lot easier here. <clears throat> uh, that, you know, Tai Chi is a martial art, and that is... The, the end game of Tai Chi, it's a martial art. It can be used for a lot of other things. But the reason we do the moves is for martial arts. However, we can train martial arts in different ways. So, for example, uh, you might exaggerate a move. Okay, so I'll use an example. Um, when Back in my violin days, I was a very serious classical violinist. And, you know, if you're learning a new phrase or you're trying to, to, to play something... You know, my teacher would say, you know, exaggerate, you know, make it, and it sounds kind of cheesy when you exaggerate like that. It sounds like it's like over the top when you just like, you put too much into it and you exaggerate. Um, but that's part of the learning process and it helps you to get where you're going. Sometimes we do the same thing with Tai Chi. We make the moves large so we can feel it and feel the Chi flowing and get that feel of it. And then later it's just a small move. So I'll give you an example, another example which is grasping sparrow's tail. Let's see, this, this may help. So grasping sparrow's tail can look like this. It's a famous sequence from the Young style. Uh, let's see, sorry. Let's switch cameras again. <clears throat> right? This is somewhat large movement. This is pretty, I would say, pretty normal movements. But, you know, if it's more application, it's going to be something like this. Just a tiny movement, just like this. That's the first move. Or the loop, the, the rollback could be just like this. Small, maybe even smaller, right? So punch below sleeves in the form is like this, right? In a self-defense application, it might be just really small, just brushing the punch, their punch away with this, and I'm going underneath their punch and punching through the body. So. 
it's okay to practice Tai Chi in different ways, uh, especially if it feels good. But then in the end game, what pulls it together is the martial arts application. And honestly, that's where a lot of people get confused with Tai Chi. It's not something that beginners need to worry about, but it's something that wouldn't you like to be able to turn this art, if you practice Tai Chi for 30 years, you're just having fun, it's good for your health, it keeps you happy and healthy. Wouldn't you like to be able to turn it into a self-defense art if you decided you wanted to? Well, unfortunately, the way a lot of people practice Tai Chi, that's not available to them because they've, it's been too divorced from the martial arts aspect. And they truly have, I mean, it's, it's kind of shocking to me. They, they do these moves and they have no idea what they're doing even after 20 or 30 years. And if that's you, that's, you know, I don't mean to, to offend you or insult you. That's unfortunately the way that Tai Chi is very often taught. But I don't teach it that way because I'm a longtime martial artist. And for me, the meaning behind the Tai Chi moves is very clear. And even if students aren't going to really practice it, even if students are just interested for intellectual curiosity, I think it's helpful for them to know. So, for example, for them to know um, one of the, in the, the Yang style form, for example, this move, the seal and close, what is that? What are they doing? So again, it's like this, there's a punch, and then the hand comes on the outside, and you come back with a push. What is that? What are we doing there? Why would we do it that way? And what's it for? Well, I, I think it's interesting in Tai Chi to eventually show the students what they're doing there, what the scenario is, and why the form looks like that. That's, that's an interest of mine. Out of curiosity, this side of Tai Chi, this, um, we understand that if, you know, I understand that most of my students, if they're interested in martial arts, it's from a very, ca we're casual martial art artists. Even myself, I'm a, I'm more on the serious side. I've been doing it for a long time. I'm pretty, pretty uh, serious about it. But, you know, I don't pretend that I'm the world's best martial artist. I, I, I don't train for eight hours a day like the past masters. And my students train even less than I do. So, you know, it's a kind of a casual and fun approach to these arts. But does this interest you? I, I'm actually really curious about this for my future teaching. Does, at least on an intellectual level and understanding a little bit about the martial arts aspect of the Tai Chi patterns, is that something that's of interest to you? I'd be very curious to know your answers. Yeah, Sherry, okay, good. Thank you for, for the feedback. Um, so Sherry says, uh, that's what I'm interested in. What do the moves mean? What, what, what's the application? Some are obvious, but not all. Even the ones that are obvious are not terribly obvious. So for example, you know, this one I, I mentioned before, punch below sleeves. There are some subtleties that it's not, you know, it's not just a punch. This hand is doing something too. And what is that? What is that scenario where punch below sleeves is what's going on there. Um, so, you know, that's the subtlety of Chinese martial arts, which are very sophisticated and hard to learn, but they're also really beautiful. You know, they go all the way from empty handed to, um, hang on a second, I'll be right back. Ta da! Excuse my Chinese sword. This is a beautiful sword made by one of my students. So, this is another example of. I've, I've literally, literally met people who practice the Tai Chi sword and somehow are convinced that this is not a martial art. <laughs> this, is, this is a sword. This is a wooden sword, but it's still a sword. When you do this, you are absolutely practicing martial arts. It just happens to be a very graceful and gentle martial art. <laughs> okay, so um, Stephen says he's interested. So what is the closing? Okay, so, the, so Cynthia, the closing for this routine is very casual. You can begin and end with shaking the tree. So you can start this little session with shaking the tree. Uh, sorry, let me change. I need a cameraman, camera person. Okay, so we can start, start the session with shaking the tree. Loosen up a little bit, maybe one minute. Do a couple minutes of variations on the theme of cloud hands. Just have some fun, you can move around, flow, bigger circles, 
smaller circles, moving around. You can do reverse cloud hands. Some of you are probably ready for single hand where you just put one hand on the hip and you can go in any direction. You can even trace a figure eight with the one hand. And then when you're finished, you can actually do a little bit more shaking a tree. And then that's it. So if you're you know, a long time student of mine or you've learned more, if you've learned the five phase routine, then of course you can work this into the five phase routine. But those of you who don't know the five phase routine, don't worry. I mean, I encourage you to learn the five phase routine. It's a beautiful thing and it's great, but I'm just trying to keep it very simple here and just to do a fun, fun little Facebook routine. Um, sorry, the, the meaning of the closing of the Yang Style 24 form. It depends on the version you do, but in, let's see. So a lot of the forms that'll be here, right? And then up like this. This one is a Qigong exercise. That's, that doesn't need an application. But are you asking this one? Is a, it's a very useful um, release from a double grab. It's very hard to explain alone, but basically if somebody's grabbing both of my wrists, there's a way to sink and release in a way that they end up like this. So if I'm grabbing their wrists and I do that technique correctly, what happens is I first go forward a little bit and then back. And it sort of, and if I hold on, I end up like this simply by me going down and up. Okay, so Holly says, when asked the difference between Qigong and Tai Chi, a former teacher told me they were the same. So I appreciate knowing the details that you shared today. So I don't know, sometimes teachers, they just don't want to get into it. Like they don't want to explain the difference. I know teachers like this. I know teachers who absolutely know the difference between Qigong and Tai Chi, but they just don't feel like explaining it. Okay. Some teachers don't know the difference and that's, that's another issue. They should. Um, but I, I feel like people should know the difference and we're at a point in you know, the expansion of Qigong and Tai Chi that people need to know the difference. So people who practice Tai Chi need to know what Qigong is and that they need to know that they need some Qigong. You need both if you're doing Tai Chi. If you're doing Tai Chi, you, you need some Qigong. Vice versa, you can do a lot of Qigong without do, doing Tai Chi, but it's fun to do some Tai Chi, which is what the purpose of this class was. Let's see, what is, uh, Brenda says, I was, I was taught the martial applications and I teach them now. As you say, understanding the intentions of the movements helps understand what the movements mean. Some students don't want to know them. Yeah, so I, I've had lots of students that they don't want to know because they're overwhelmed with learning the form, which is fine. But eventually, it's really good when students change their mind, when they realize that rather than just moving their arms in the air, without knowing what they're doing, it's more fun and more engaging. And actually, you move more chi when you know what you're doing with the moves because the mind is really engaged in a different way. Um, even some really stubborn students who insisted that they didn't want to learn martial arts, that they, that they, didn't, um, they didn't want to practice violence, for example, which is a total misconception. It's a paradox of martial arts that practicing martial arts um, makes us less violent, but a lot of people don't understand that. But even these stubborn students, they, they change their tune after a while of just, once they got the form down, they got the moves. And I think one thing that really changes it for people is understanding the camaraderie of a nice Tai Chi class where you can do this in very friendly ways. Um, maybe some of you have experienced very um, aggressive, you know, sort of testosterone filled martial arts schools. I myself have been in lots of those. And, you know, it's a turnoff for the martial arts for a lot of people, myself included. I don't really like that vibe. Um, I love martial arts, but, you know, I've had my nose broken twice. I've had two scratch corneas, broken ribs. I, I've just, you know, I've had so many injuries in the martial arts. All of those were before Tai Chi, by the way. Um, and I don't want to go back to that kind of training. And Tai Chi is just, it's a gentle martial art that allows us to sort of playfully experiment with some of these techniques and it's just it's a very cool vibe and there's a lot of fun that we have in classes when working together on the techniques it's not competitive or there's no aggression and no testosterone it's just fun basically 
<clears throat> Let's see, so, sorry, I'm catching up on the, the comments here. So Sean says, it's interesting, but I have to wonder about the limitations of online instruction. If I was going to commit to Tai Chi, I'd be all in, and what happens when I get advanced enough to online? Yeah, there's no way you can learn it all online, Sean. Absolutely, we agree, there's no way. Uh, what you could learn with Tai Chi or something else is the foundations, right? Which, as a teacher, quite frankly, that's what's most often missing. People have not spent long enough on the foundations. They haven't, um, they haven't learned the basics of whatever martial art they're, they're practicing. Uh, so, you know, a lot of those basics could be learned online. And in fact, having an online course as a, excuse me, as a reference would be very valuable for a lot of people. But there's no escape. You cannot learn Tai Chi solo forever, right? Eventually you need to learn in person and you need to touch other people and you need to, you know, experience what we're talking about with the patterns and you need to learn push hands and all those things. Um, even this, the sword, right? There are drills with the sword where there's two people drilling together, kind of like uh, push hands with the sword where you're moving around. So you can do all the moves you want solo, but... You know, if you want to learn the art of the Tai Chi sword or just the, the Chinese Jian, you're eventually going to have to fence, right? No question. Uh, Dean says it's about overcoming your opponent, not destroying your opponent. Yeah, destroying, I mean, most martial arts are really not about picking fights. Unfortunately, there's a lot of aggression out there in like the mixed martial arts world. The truly advanced mixed martial artists that I've met or very gentle people. They, they're they like Tai Chi masters. They're really gentle because honestly, they've gotten their butt kicked for so many years. They know what skill is. They know they can hurt you. They, they've got nothing to prove that they're very gentle people. But unfortunately, you know, with the competitions and some of the other stuff in the martial arts world these days, um, there's a lot of aggression out there. So maybe people are picking fights. But martial arts are really about um, mastering yourself. Mastering yourself, your body, your energy, your emotions, and your mind. Uh, which are all, of course, critical in a self-defense scenario. So if you freak out, if somebody throws a punch at you and you freak out, you know, you're going to get hit. Uh, and it's, it's not just about overcoming the opponent. I don't even like the word opponent. Um, it's about defending myself and mastering myself. It's really about me in the end is what Tai, tai Chi, I mean, it's about, you know, maybe eventually Tai Chi is about world peace. I, I believe that that could be, True, that's a true statement, but Tai Chi is about mastering myself and my mind. And if somebody, for example, um, sometimes people say, well, I practice nonviolence. Fine. So do I. But here's the difference, for example, with me, because I, I'm a longtime martial artist and I can defend myself and I know that I can defend myself and I, I, I don't really worry about it anymore like I used to. If someone attacks me, I have a choice how to respond. I can choose to respond with self-defense, which would involve some violence, right? Or I can choose to walk away. I can choose to not respond, depending on the scenario. So for me, when I say I practice nonviolence, I'm actually making a choice as opposed to what some people say when they say they practice nonviolence, which means they have no choice. They're not actually practicing it. They just have no choice but to let themselves, you know, get beat up in, if somebody tries to punch them or, or grab them or throw them to the ground or something like that. So I believe that that is something that happens in Tai Chi, but more importantly, what happens with Tai Chi is all these subtle, invisible things like confidence and greater awareness. Um, that's real self-defense. So, for example, if you have a greater awareness and a grace under pressure and you're able to avoid a dangerous situation, whether that situation is on the street or even in your car driving, well, that's, that's Tai Chi too. Screensaver went on. I need to figure out how to turn that off. Off. So um, I use Tai Chi principles. I use Tai Chi all the time and rarely in a fight. Does that make sense? So I use Tai Chi in communication. I use Tai Chi while I'm driving. I use Tai Chi if I see a potentially dangerous scenario and I just swerve and avoid it. Uh, I use Tai Chi to defend myself from people who are verbally and maybe even physically aggressive in a way that they don't they don't fully appreciate. I, I use Tai Chi for that. It doesn't mean I start doing Tai Chi forms. It means I use the principles of Tai Chi, of softness, of yielding, of going with the flow, of staying relaxed and calm under pressure. That's, that's what I feel is also Tai Chi. 
Okay, so I'm, I'm going on and on and on and babbling. I could talk about Tai Chi all day, but let me cut this short. Um, does anybody have any last minute questions before we call it a day? We've gone over as I typically do. Does anybody have any last minute questions or comments for me? Did you enjoy this? Was this, did this whole little setup work? I mean, this is a, this is, the software is a new teaching tool for me. So I'm curious, was this, um, was this helpful? Would you, would you like me to do more of these? You know, I could, obviously I can teach a, a, a bunch of different things in this way, but was this format of a live video like this and using the two cameras and doing it on Facebook, how did this work? Can you give me some feedback to let me know how, how, how it felt? I know it's, um, it's a bit of a paradox because most people on Facebook, you know, here's my phone, you know, usually we're just like, we're stressed out and distracted when we're on our, on Facebook, on our phone or whatever. So practicing mindfulness on, on Facebook is an interesting paradox, but I also believe it's a good thing. I mean, I believe that why not? If we can catch someone's attention and give them a few minutes of mindfulness and sort of help them to relax and open up their mind, good, you know? It's, it, Facebook is a tool. It can be used for good or for evil, I guess. <clears throat> Let's see. So you think this is 480p, Sean? I think I'm in high def, but I'll check. We'll find out later. You're welcome, Holly. Yeah, I don't mind lab laboring a little bit on Labor Day. Let's see. Did I miss any questions here? I think I got them all. If I missed your question, just go ahead and ask it again and I'll try to answer it. And I'm gonna leave the replay for this up for a little while. So if you thought this was helpful and you think that somebody would benefit from it, go ahead and share it or send it to them in a, in a Facebook message. And you know, maybe we'll turn them on to Tai Chi. That's really what, you know, that's, that's basically my job. My job is to help people fall in love with Qigong and Tai Chi and you know, thank you for helping me do my job. If you share it with your friends, that'd be, I'd be grateful. You're welcome. You're very welcome. Good, Angie, I'm glad you agree. I think I, 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 if, this, uh, if this makes Facebook a more positive experience for people, then I'm all for it. Let's do it. <laughs> Brenda, you shouldn't encourage me like that. You, uh, Brenda says, I can happily listen to you talking all day. I learn something new every time. Thank you for generously sharing your knowledge. Um, you don't need to encourage me to keep talking. I'm a New Yorker, so not only do I just keep talking all the time, but I talk with my hands. But thank you for the compliment. I will accept, I'll try to gracefully accept that compliment. Uh, I do have, um, I, 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 I admit that I have, um, I have a good brain for a lot of Tai Chi and Qigong information. And what I've learned over the years is that I also read a lot. I read 100 books a year which is nothing compared to my wife who probably reads 200. Anyway, I, like my wife has a very good brain for acupuncture and Chinese medicine, better than mine, but I have a very good brain for Qigong and Tai Chi. And what I found over the years of teaching is that I don't even know what I know. It's what, that's why I love live settings like this is because information comes out of me that, you know, I just, I, I wasn't, it's up to you, you guys sometimes, to ask me questions or to corner me or to maneuver to get that information or that new, it's not just information, right? It's, it's a new perspective on something. Um, it's up to you sometimes to get that out of me and out of this brain here. Um, and you know, I'm game to give you the formats to do that, whether it's on Facebook or a live video like this or in one of my online programs or on my blog, but Please don't ever be shy about asking me a question and please dig if you find it helpful to dig into this brain and get some sort of, you know, that's what teachers are. Teachers are just, we've been playing with this subject matter for so many years and you know, we're interested in sharing that information and teaching it in a variety of different ways. So please you know, find ways to get that stuff out of my head and into, into your head or really it's into your heart because um, that's what I do. That's, that's what it means to be a teacher. I want to help you see something in a new light and to understand it in a new way and to take that home and practice it and to benefit from it. That's, that's all any teacher wants and that's what I want too. Hi Jane, nice to, well I can't see you but I can see your little picture there, but nice to see you again. Um, I hope to see you again in Costa Rica sometime soon. 
And I think I'm going to sign off unless anybody has a last minute comment. So I hope you enjoyed this. This was fun for me. It was a fun little uh, Labor Day labor. And uh, again, if you thought this was helpful, you can do two things. You can let me know in the comments now and even after we sign off. And two, you can share it with your friends. That would be a nice way of, of saying thank you to me because you know this, this is really about reaching people and spreading the word about Qigong and Tai Chi. Looking at the comments here, I know a lot of you. I've met a lot of you. I've worked with a lot of you. I know you already get it. So if you think that this video would help somebody, then please send it to them. Okay. Okay, well, let's see. I'll do a little, can I do a little heart? Heart. I can't really do it with my fingers, but I'll send a heart shape back to everybody as well. And I'm going to sign off here. Have a good rest of your Labor Day weekend. And I look forward to seeing you all somewhere in the Flowing Zen online world and offline world too. So some of you I'll, I'll see, I don't know where I'll see you guys. Uh, maybe in Costa Rica, maybe in Arkansas, maybe someplace else, but somewhere in either the online or the offline Flowing Zen world. Have a beautiful day everybody, thank you for joining.